Hello, welcome to WesleyGospel.com. I just completed the um, a pretty long section of letter to the Reverend Dr. Connors Middleton by John Wesley, which is his which is his writing against the top cessationist of his day. That was the John MacArthur charismatic chaos of the 1700s. Uh, Connors Middleton. His book called Free Inquiry into the Miraculous Powers. That was the charismatic chaos by John MacArthur in the 1800s. And so John Wesley, John Wesley, the leader of the Methodist Church, which was actually Anglican. It was an Anglican movement, an Anglican charismatic movement. So he was Anglican. Uh, he's basically the top guy responding to this and. I still haven't recorded everything. I've, I just finished part five of it. But one of the things that just comes out is that this guy, this book, Free Inquiry into the Miraculous Powers by Connors Middleton, is the first cessationist book. He basically took David Hume's materialistic reductionism and, and applied it to the church fathers. And he's a pastor, by the way, this guy. Yeah, he's a pastor applying principles of naturalistic skepticism and materialistic reductionism to the church fathers. So every supernatural claim that exists in the anti-Nicene fathers is completely slammed down and everything is brought down to the level of atoms and molecules. There is no spirits, there is no miracles, there is no demons, no angels, no Holy Spirit. Everything's always given a natural explanation every time. And he relies on two uh, explanations. Number one, all the church fathers were liars. Number two, all the church fathers were fools. Or both. Fools or liars. Nothing more. And since he, he influenced B.B. Warfield in the Counterfeit Miracles book, who in turn influenced all of John MacArthur's cessationism, we can draw the conclusion that this naturalistic reductionism is really the spiritual substance of cessationism. It's no different than what you might see in a religious, uh, a philosophy and religion department at a state university. You're, it's really no different than that. It's no different than what you would see in pastors in the mainline Protestant churches, Presbyterian USA, Evangelical Lutheran, uh, Church USA, all these liberal denominations where gay marriage is going on. You have a naturalistic, materialistic reductionism that rejects the spirit world uh, for no other reason than because the scientific community. So it's always to put, it's, it, there's a sense of scientism associated with it. Science is, mat, scientific community is naturalistically reductionistic, rejects the spirit world, angels, demons, Holy Spirit. Therefore, Therefore, cessationism does the same thing. And it's a miracle. It, um, no, it's not a miracle. It, it is surprising that these guys actually want to still keep a foot in the church and say that they believe in the Bible because it's really surprising to me. In fact, the, the closer you read Connors Middleton, you'll find the guy never really even believed in the Bible at all. He didn't believe in the existence of exorcism. He didn't believe in the existence of demon possession. Uh, and so, I mean, even the, the way he talks is so rationalistic, so materialistically reductionistic. You could tell that this guy doesn't even have faith in the spirit world in the first place, has no spiritual experience. The Bible talks about that. Uh, there are people out there that are so so blind to the realm of the spirit. Uh, there's a verse for that. 1 Corinthians 2.14 The person without the spirit, that means the person without the Holy Spirit, does not accept, does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit, or in other words, known only through the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.14. There are people out there that do not have the presence of God. They do not have the witness of the Spirit. 
feeling of the Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit, and they consider these things to be foolishness, just like Conyers Middleton. He considers all the all of the church fathers to be either fools on account of the fact that they talk about spiritual experiences or liars on account of the fact that they talk about spiritual experiences. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness. That's Conyers Middleton. That's cessationism. That's naturalistic materialism and naturalistic reductionism. Everything, every time you hear of a miracle or a supernatural experience, an angel, a demon, anything, the Holy Spirit, anything that has to do with, with non-physical reality, supernatural reality, every time such a person always throws a natural explanation at it to bring the understanding down to nothing but physical matter. Okay. It surprises me that people like this even go to church at all because really they're just atheists. They, they, they literally are atheists. But why do they go to church? God only knows. It's probably just a human tradition. But people who talk like this and think like this, I have to quit back at them and say, and so when did you become an atheist? And then they might say, oh, oh, oh how dare you? How, how dare you? What do you mean, how dare you? You're talking exactly like an atheist would talk. Why don't you stop being so intellectually dishonest and come forward and just admit that you're an atheist? There was a charismatic guy from Scotland. I have a video of him on this. Um, uh, let's see here. This video. Okay, I did a post. Uh, Supernatural Theology 95, and at the bottom of it, there's this crazy charismatic guy that goes into John MacArthur's church and rebukes him for his cessationism. And as he's being escorted out by his bouncers, he calls him an unbeliever, and of all the rantings and of all the ravings that the man said, when he called John MacArthur an unbeliever, the whole church gasped in a reaction, as if to say, message received. Uh, that's exactly what it is. I'm sorry. You might get your doctrine right. You might be that Nicodemus, but you have no Holy Spirit, and so therefore you're an unbeliever. The Pharisees were like that. The Sadducees were like that. They knew the scriptures, but they did not know the power of God. There's no mystical apprehensions of the Holy Spirit. The person without the Holy Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them to be foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned or known only through the Spirit. Here's the King James Version of 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Holman Christian Standard Bible, 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The unbeliever, wow, actually goes so far as to call him an unbeliever. The unbeliever does not welcome what comes from God's Spirit, because it is foolishness to him, he is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. He cannot evaluate this as a book, as a report, as a newspaper article through reading. This is a non-reading activity. Okay? Receiving the things of the Spirit of God is not a raiding activity. It's a prayer activity. And it's a dreaming activity. Good news translation of 1 Corinthians 2.14. Whoever does not have the Spirit cannot receive the gifts that come from God's Spirit. Such a person really does not understand them, and they seem to be nonsense because their value can be judged only on a spiritual basis. 
And that's what happens with cessationism. These people are evaluating miraculous gifts or reports of them, and yet they have never had experiences with miraculous gifts themselves. So they're treating it as something completely disconnected from themselves in book format. And they just turn into naturalistic reductionists and natural explanation every single time, just like an atheist, just like an atheist. And yet these are Baptist preachers, Presbyterian preachers. It's a Young's translation, 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural man doth not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for, they, for to him they are foolishness, for he is not able to know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's cessationism. Cessationists have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They've never felt the Holy Spirit, generally speaking. Or maybe they did feel the Holy Spirit one time, but all the other gifts of the Spirit they have not had experience with. And, uh, you know, John Wesley wrote about that. He talked about that when he was commenting in his journal he read a book called The General Delusion of Christians with Regard to Prophecy by John Lacey. And he commented on it. He said, people who have been cessationists in the past are generally people who did not have gifts themselves. And they're in a habit of calling charismatics either A, mad, or, or B, liars. You know, you're either insane with, with hallucinations, or B, you're lying about your spiritual experiences. Well, that's exactly what Conyers Middleton and cessationists do. They call charismatics liars, fools, or mentally ill. But one thing's for sure, they're not genuinely experiencing the Holy Spirit or angels or demons. They're not because those things just don't happen. Well, to, to a cessationist unbeliever, they don't happen, right? because you have no experience of the Spirit of God. They're not, they're foolishness to you because you are not one of those elect, I'm sorry. You're not one of those elect that have had experience of the Holy Spirit. And now you should start wondering whether or not you're even saved. Romans 1, 8, 16, Romans 8, 16 says that the Spirit bears witness that you're supposed to be a child of God. Are, are, the Spirit's supposed to bear witness that you're a child of God. Have you had that? Have you had that? Or are you just dealing with a book level of salvation? Hey, man, the clock is ticking. When are you going to start seeking the Holy Spirit? Hey, start getting some Pentecostal books. Get some books on the Holy Spirit. Isolate yourself. It's just between you and the Holy Spirit. Go to a Church of God pastor. Go to a Church of God pastor. And ask him, go to an Assemblies of God pastor and ask him, what do I need to do to get the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Can you pray for me to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? I, I don't have this. Please help me. Show me the way. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. I uh, just did a part five recording, uh, Supernatural Theology 97. And in this, I was able to recover uh, Thomas C. Oden's summary of Letter to the Conyers Middleton by Wesley in his book, uh, John Wesley's Scriptural Christianity. John Wesley's Scriptural Christianity, pages uh, 118 to 120, kind of gave me the basis for what I've been doing with this. You know, you read, you read it and then you comment on it, summarize it. And basically what is it saying here? It's saying that, you know, Connors Middleton was clearly a man that had no experience of the Holy Spirit. He's like one of these types of people that is being explained in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 2.14. He's a natural man. He's an unbeliever. He's an unspiritual man who does not receive the gifts of, this, of the Holy Spirit. And so therefore he considers them to be either hallucinations, mental illness, foolishness, something like that because he's never experienced that. So therefore everyone's a fool who does. Doesn't that just make you angry listening to that? So anyway, what he does is he attacks the church fathers, not only the earliest ones, but all of them. All of them because they were all charismatics who claimed to experience the Holy Spirit. 
practically all of them. And uh, some of them had cessationist moments like Augustine and Chrysostom, but then later on became Charismatics later. At least Augustine did. So uh, book, book 22, City of God. So, you know, so yeah, he just attacks the church fathers. They're Charismatics, dude. Calls them liars. Why? Because they said they saw miracles. Calls them liars. Why? Because they said they saw visions. When he's never had one, so therefore everyone who has is a liar. <laughs> uh, you know, it just goes to show that when people get older and educated, if they don't have experience of the Holy Spirit, they act like little kids, like bullies, like brats. And it doesn't change. Like, the fact that they get older doesn't change the fact that they're a brat. Like, this guy was a brat. And he died the year after he published this book. What does that tell you? Um, he talks about how he thinks that the miracle workers of the early church were money-hungry con artists, like these people on TBN. But there's no proof of that. And pagans said that about Christians, but there, again, there's no proof of that. Another thing is that these pastors who said they saw miracles were willing to be martyred for their faith, and many of them were in the Colosseum. Another thing that uh, Thomas C. Oden brings to the surface here on, um, on page 120 of John Wesley's Scriptural Christianity, he said that there is no room to doubt of the truth of the facts therein asserted about the church fathers talking about miracles. Seeing the apologists constantly desired their enemies to come and see them with their own eyes, a hazard which liars would never run had not the facts themselves been infallibly certain. In other words, the church fathers were bold, so bold as to invite their critics to come into their meetings and watch them and see the miracles for themselves. They weren't trying to keep them out and, um, you know, conceal some sort of con artistry. They were like, come on, come and look for yourself. That's the attitude they had. So, uh, Conyers Middleton was just, just a person that did not have the Holy Spirit and was angry that other people, like the Methodists, were saying that they were having the Holy Spirit and who was jealous. So what can you do but call them a bunch of liars or idiots or or mad or madmen, you know? And there you have the father of cessationism in a nutshell.